My name's Arthur Coughton. I was sweeper and I've spent something like double figures at the club. Yeah, when did you first realise you, you liked football? Well, I was um, from a big family and all my brothers had played football. They'd, I had six older brothers, so I was playing football with my brothers for some time. You know. Where did you hone your skills? On Blackheath, South London. We used to have a pitch across the road from the house. So I was very lucky and I used to see Sunday morning football there. And quite often I'd played for older football teams than my age at the time. So I was a pretty lucky person. On, on Blackheath, we had, Blackheath was opposite where my parents lived in South London. So I was able to practice practically every day across the road from my house. How did you get to play to the Premier League? John Newman asked me to come and sign for him at the time. I had met John during the summer and he sort of half telltale to me what his views were about what he could do at Billericay Town. And I'm obviously delighted that he asked me to join him. What was the ground like? Dreadful. But John hadn't had a time to improve on the ground but uh, he certainly worked on it with players because he got together a really really good bunch of players here and they weren't playing just for the club they were playing for John and most of the players as you've heard people like Freddie when you come and join Billericay you don't leave you you are a player here and you belong and it's a great atmosphere and it's still here I believe so, you know, he's it's, it's got to really thank him back to John for all, all that effort. When I played for Billericay, I only lived down um, about three or four streets away from here. So I was able to walk to training at the time. So very handy. How did you manage the work life balance? Uh, work work balance? That was pretty easy. I worked in the city. I, was, um, I, I played for the Stock Exchange. I was captain of the Stock Exchange football team. And uh, I worked in the city, so it was, I was commuting really. And my job, um, I was, my job facilitated me playing and training here with no trouble at all. Do you remember getting any money from the fans as, just because you were around? Well, the, the only thing I remember was probably what Freddie said to you earlier on that, that the fans after the, after the games used to have what, what was called a whip and they used to put it behind the bar for the players drinking facility and that was done nearly nearly all the season and they were um, very very loyal to us and we were loyal to them back and the relationship with the fans was uh, and still is I believe marvellous fantastic here do you remember any rivalry between the teams um like everybody else, I vaguely remember that we couldn't stand the sight of Basildon Town. <laughs> so, um, we got, had some friends there, but uh, there was massive rivalry between the two clubs. How did that materialise? Was it just going in a bit harder? Um, well, probably, yes. Yes, I guess so, yeah. Uh, take, yeah typical match day, did you have any particular, particular preparation? No, not at all, no. What's, it, what's the most memorable match outside the bars? Running? Um, probably Farnborough Town, I think. You know, they came here and showed us how to be disciplined, and they all looked pretty smart, and they 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 all were disciplined on the pitch. And um, I don't know whether we stole that off them, but uh, certainly it did come back to this club, and. We had some good tussles with them and we were still um, very friendly with them, despite the fact that, you know, we had real tussles out on the pitch. Great. Did you have any injury problems? I was very lucky as I didn't tackle very much. I didn't get <laughs> injured much. So uh, most of the time I was not injured at all. The whole time I was here, hardly ever injured. Superstitions? No, none at all. Um, 
stick and banter? Did you ever have any stick and banter? Uh, I probably gave out more stick than uh, and banter myself to other people. And you know, I was a bit renowned for having a fairly sharp tongue here. So, um, had, had what? What was it like to be a captain? What, what do you? What, what qualities do you need? And what did you have? Well, I was captain of the London Stock Exchange football team, so I was quite experienced at dealing with players and and uh, also picking teams, so I was quite used to it. And when I came here, John almost automatically gave me the authority, or well, not authority, but the discipline and which we had in the dressing room. Any influential players or role models at the club? Stevie Bone, Imperial. Absolutely brilliant. So lucky to get him to come to this club. Fantastic character, fantastic player. What was his strength at playing? What was his game? He was massive in the air and massive in pace and really, really um, strict character on the pitch. And I was proud to be playing alongside him. Do you remember the... Um Matches leading up to the final. I was thinking you might have to go eventually. Farnborough, probably, yeah. Yeah. What do you remember about that match? Um, I think we probably played above our game, you know, and um, we were lucky to get away with what we got away with. Yeah, so final day. What, Special, obviously. So, what did what did you do between getting up and getting to the ground? What, how did you get there? Um, I, I, on the bus with all the lads is normal, but um, I sort of had sort of a sleepless, sleepy night, if, you, if that sounds right. But um, I was quite quite nervy about playing at Wembley. At Wembley, yes, very much so. Did you, did you notice any of the fans in the atmosphere getting near the ground and into the ground? Well, the whole of Wembley Way was littered with Illyricky fans. So we were made quite welcome by the fans. And and by the time we were coming out on the pitch, the whole area was littered with Illyricky fans. It felt like they were all in blue and white. And what did it, what did it feel like coming out of the... About the dressing rooms, but coming out of that tunnel must be the moment. The Wembley uh, staff made us very welcome, so we came out onto the pitch, and all we could see was our blue and white. It was just absolutely outstanding. It was brilliant. So, did you did you have any people in the crowd you were sort of looking for, or did you, did you manage just to soak up that whole thing? Well, I think I may have said to you, I had six older brothers. And they were in the crowd at Wembley, so I was quite uh, flattered to have, you know, my, have my own deck of fans there. And how did your match go? My personal, personal match. match. Well, um, I don't think I played very well at all at Wembley. I was too nervous. And how did that manifest on the pitch? Um, have I scored an own goal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a dreadful error by me and I scored an own goal. And uh, it left me pretty down. But most of the boys were very generous to me and were telling me, to, you know, to push it away and get on. So, um, and that's what happened. So, um, what, was, what was the presentation like? I felt absolutely honoured to be representing Billericay Town there and collecting the bars. You know, it was quite a, quite a moment. Um, how were the emotions running through you as the final whistle went and you realised that was it? Well, I was thinking I'd never play here again um, at the time and uh, never realising that it was, was going to come back again. But at the time, I was just absolutely knocked out by the fans and the, the you know, the, just the, just the way the, 
Billericay fans backed us, you know, to the hilt. You know, it's just quite amazing. And were you the party, the inevitable parties afterwards? Were you being so respected by everyone else? Were you at the heart of them, or were you? How did you? How did you celebrate with the rest of the team? Well, um, I, I sort of. I joined in because I wanted to enjoy, you know, thinking this will never happen again, you know. So, I was, I was quite a relaxed p person off the pitch, you know. So, most of the players know that, you know. I was, um, I think John had chosen me for the role, to be perfectly honest. So, um, he allowed me to indulge with the uh, the rest of the boys. So. Okay, so in the, in the bus, the buses through the high street. The buses through the high street was absolutely amazing, and still lives in my memory now. You know, I'm very flattered. I have pictures at home of the very the uh, open top ride. You know, it's fantastic. I've got them at home as my memorabilia. Okay, so yeah, what what were your enduring memories of? Well, the souvenirs, talk us through the sort of souvenirs we have I'd, I'd certainly collect them, I know that. Well, the, the medals, um, I've got the three medals that I picked up. Um, my son has got one and my daughter's got one and uh, there's one at home. And what, what do you, what do you, what's your, what's your sort of favourite memory about I just felt that um, I'd achieved something in life and particularly as it was attached to Billericay Town because I felt part of the community here and the, you know someone said earlier on about it but they weren't fans they were family so it's absolutely true I'm still treated very very um, flatteringly whenever I do, uh, come here to this club I get treated in, in an extraordinarily charming way have you got have you got one memory of Billericay Town that's a, that's a take home memory what, what favourite out of all the matches all the moments if you could place yourself in that 10 minutes when, when would that be that's a tough one I think I can't We've had some really brilliant times at this club and the, it's sort of depicted by the way the fans hang around and they, they, they mix with the players and it feels like one big family. And I'm a part of it and I just feel that I could sort of not be here for 10 years and come back and the fans would still be treating you just like, you, you, like a local hero. I, I sort of feel, I feel like that when I'm here. I do. It's true. Brilliant, special. So, in a hundred years' time, how do you want to be remember, remembered? Uh, I hope there'll be uh, enough of my um, family to uh, keep the memory going, and perhaps they might come back and um, and see what sort of the legacy was that we left here. Fantastic. Quite amazing. I'm still very flattered by it all, as you can tell. <laughs>